Today we will be learning about energy conversions. We are going to be showing you a quick video clip, but first I'm going to pass out some energy terms and assign groups types of energy. We want you all to look for your type of energy in the video. Make sure to read your energy terms um, whenever I pass them out within your groups. We want each group to look for a different type of energy conversion throughout the video. I'm going to be assigning groups different energy conversions, such as light, chemical, mechanical, sound, and wind. So now that we know some energy forms, whenever you see this type of energy conversion in the video, I want you to put your thumb up in the air. You may see situations where one form of energy is changed into another. For example, electrical to sound. But your task is to look for your particular form of energy. So what form of energy do you expect to see in the video? All sorts of energies. Mechanical, potential. Yeah. What evidence might you look for that would indicate the presence of sound energy? You could hear it. What about mechanical energy? You could see the motion. And light energy? You can see light. Electrical energy? Uh, you might see some wires. And finally, chemical energy? You would see something that's happening with chemicals. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to be showing the car commercial. And remember to put your thumb up in the air when you see your type of energy conversion. So what are some of the objects you saw in the video? Tires, screws, car seats, and car parts. Yeah, what kind of, what kind of energy transformations did you observe? Sound, mechanical, a lot. Okay, and what was the first action completed by the machine? The car was turned on by hitting the remote. Exactly. So now that you know what types of energies were shown in the video, what are some, <coughs> what are some examples of energies you see on a daily basis? Turning on the car is a chemical uh, or sound energy. Car on top of a hill is potential energy, and a car going down a hill is kinetic energy. Good. Today we're going to be studying energy conversions, and we'll be able to answer our question of the day, which is how many energy conversions can take place to complete a task? Mr. Mason is going to put the question of the day up on the dot cam. And now Mr. Mason is also going to pass out the Rube Goldberg machine vocabulary worksheet. So what we just saw in the commercial is called a Rube Goldberg machine. It's a machine that's used to wear energy conversions to complete a task. So what were the connections between the car parts in the video? What causes them to move around? The parts pump into one another, so there must be some sort of energy that causes them uh, to move like that. Very nice. So energy is the ability to work. Mr. Mason is going to put the definitions of Rube Goldberg machines and energy up on the dot cam. Be sure to fill this in on your worksheet. So I want you to turn and talk to your shoulder partner about the different types of energy you saw, or the energy conversions you saw in the video. 
Um, so take a few seconds to talk with your partners about that. Okay, now I'm gonna call on some of you to tell us the energy conversions you observed. So what types of energy did you see in the video? Mechanical with the rolling gears and nails and stuff. Awesome, what else? Uh, wind, we saw the windshield wipers uh, spring and move across the screen. Very nice. Anything else? There was electrical. Uh, there was a fan turning, a remote control turning on after it was hit. Good. What else? Uh, there was some chemical energy stored in the battery. Wow, you guys really got this. Is there anything else? There, there was also sound energy in the speakers, right? Very good. So, what happens when the gears hit each other? One thing hit the next so that they continued going. And what turned the car on? Uh, the gear hit the button. The, the button is in the remote. The battery's in the remote. Right, so the gears hit one another and kept rolling. This is what happened throughout the video, not just with the gears, but with lots of different things. So what exactly is inside the remote? A battery. And do you know what type of energy is inside the battery? Chemical. That's right, chemical energy is stored inside of the battery. And batteries work because of chemical reactions. The chemical energy is then transformed into electrical energy to power the remote. All right, so Mr. Mason is going to put the definition of chemical energy on the dot cam. Chemical energy is the energy stored in molecules. Chemical reactions release chemical energy. So what energy form made the gears move? Mechanical. Right. So mechanical energy is the sum of the energy in motion and at rest. Mr. Mason is going to put that definition on the dot cam as well. Be sure to record these in your notebook. So we learned that mechanical, the gear has mechanical energy because it's moving, and we know that the remote ba has batteries inside of it, so that has chemical energy. When we look at the whole process, we conclude that mechanical energy causes the battery to use its stored chemical energy, which is how the remote was able to turn on the car. So in science, there's a fundamental law, kind of like a rule, called the law of conservation of energy. According to this rule, energy is never created or destroyed, but energy is changed from one form to another. So what evidence in the video is there for this law? Energy was transferred, it went from one thing to another. Very nice. So what happened to the energy from the gear to the remote? It was converted. Very nice. So energy is converted from one form to the other. Think about how the car was able to turn on with the remote. So what energy allowed the car to turn on? Uh, mechanical to chemical. Very nice. So potential energy is the energy that's stored in the system or energy at rest. Mr. Mason's going to put this definition up on the dot cam. Be sure to record it on your worksheet. What type of energy does a roller coaster have when it's at the top of a hill? Potential energy? That's right. So kinetic energy is when an object is experiencing motion. Mr. Mason is going to put the definition of kinetic energy on the dot cam as well. Be sure to record this on your worksheet. So what happens when energy is transformed? The potential energy is uh, decreasing as it goes down the hill. At the same time, the kinetic energy is uh, getting bigger, it's increasing. The, the, uh, that's how energy is converted. Very nice. So now we're going to start our own investigation, and I need to go over a few rules first. So the first rule is that you're always being safe, and remember to wait for instructions before you begin touching your materials. The second rule is to always look and listen for our attention sign. Remember, our attention sign is the hookum sign. And the third rule is to think and work like a scientist. Remember, that means to work together with your groups and really cooperate. So today you're going to be working with your job roles again. You should be very familiar with these by now. Um, so Mr. Mason is going to go ahead and pass out the job role cards. So make sure you have a different job role than last week, because every week you should have a different role. All right, so recorders, you're going to get a worksheet from Mr. Mason. Recorder, you're going to make sure that everyone in your group gets the worksheet. All right, technicians, you're going to come to the front of the room and pick up the set of materials for your group when I say so. The principal investigators are going to make sure that everyone in the group gets a turn and that the entire group completes the activity together. The time and safety monitor is going to make, sir, make sure that everyone is following the safety instructions and that everyone is being productive. And we want you to be creative and create the different energy conversions necessary to get these dominoes to fall over. And you're going to be starting with a marble. You're only going to be able to use a ramp, a marble, the cups, and the dominoes for the first part. 
After you complete that portion of your machine, you'll raise your hand and we'll come around and check your worksheet. If we approve, you'll get to get the rest of your materials to complete the machine so that you can turn on a small light bulb. So before we begin, I want to take a look at our worksheet together. Mr. Mason's going to put it up on the back hand for us. So you'll notice that the boxes on the left side of the worksheet have the um, action that's happening. So the marble is at rest in the first step. And so on the right of that, you need to write down what type of energy it is and how you know. Remember that it might have two or more types of energy for each step. So as you go down the page, you'll notice that some of the boxes are blank. That means that you need to fill in the steps yourself in order to complete the final task, which is the box at the bottom, which is to get the dominoes to fall over. And for our experiment, we're going to be using blocks instead of dominoes. So when you're done with this section, make sure you raise your hand so that we can go ahead and approve you to move on to your next section. So before we begin, I want to ask a few more questions. What types of machines are we building again? Rube Goldberg. Awesome. Rube Goldberg. And what happens in a Rube Goldberg machine? In a Rube Goldberg machine, energy uh, conservation is used to finish a task. Very nice. All right, so now go ahead and work with your group and fill in the rest of your worksheet and create your Rube Goldberg machine. All right, now it looks like most people are finishing the first part. So technicians are now going to be able to get their batteries, wires, and a light bulb. What's in the third box on the back side of your worksheet? Battery, wires, and a light bulb. Very nice. So what type of energy is found inside of batteries again? Chemical energy. Great. All right, so go ahead and work with your groups and try to get these materials together to create a Rube Goldberg machine and light up your light bulb. Mr. Mason and I will be walking around again to make sure everyone's cooperating. Raise your hand if you have any questions. <clears throat> All right, it looks like just about everyone's finished. So let's review each of the energy conversions you saw and make sure you guys are really energy experts. So what happened when you released the marble on the track? The marble rolled. Great, and when you released the marble, or before you released the marble and it was sitting at the top of the track, what kind of energy did it have? Potential energy. Very nice. And once the marble was rolling down the track, what kind of energy did it have? Kinetic. All right. And then as the object hit the jingle bell, what happened? It made a sound. And what kind of energy did the jingle bell have as it swung? Sound energy. Good. And what energy did we see when the blocks hit each other? Uh, mechanical energy. Was there any other type of energy? Kinetic energy. Very nice. So what force did the objects experience while they were moving? Friction. That's right. All moving objects experience friction. So what happened at the end? What did the foil block do? It caused the light to light up. And where did the energy come from to make the light light up? The battery. And what type of energy was stored inside the battery again? Chemical energy. That's right. Batteries have chemical energy stored inside of them. What do we know is necessary for electrical energy to flow? A circle with no breaks in it. Right. You'll remember from our electricity lesson that you need a circle with no breaks called a circuit. If we have electricity flowing, we've created a circuit. What type of energy flowed through the wires? Electrical energy. And what type of energy was in the light? Light energy. Very nice. And where did the light energy come from? The battery. The circuit was closed. Right. So the energy required to light the light required the battery, which was chemical energy, and then it also required the electrical energy to go through the circuit. Sometimes, if a light is lit on for too long, it could get really hot. What kind of energy would this be? Heat energy. Very nice. Um, so a light bulb can release heat energy as well as light energy. So I want you to turn and talk to your partner and think about how many energy conversions take place inside of a flashlight. All right, how many energy conversions take place inside a flashlight? Let's break it down. So the first thing you're going to do to turn on a flashlight is press the button. What type of energy is this? Mechanical. Very nice. Next, what type of energy does the battery provide? Chemical. Good. And what type of energy goes through the wires of the flashlight? Electrical energy. Very nice. And what is the final energy? Light energy. Good. So there's four energy conversions that take place. First, you turn on the light bulb by pushing the button or flipping the switch. This is mechanical energy. Second, the battery provides chemical energy that is transformed into electrical energy. You're actually closing a circuit when you turn on the flashlight. The energy that flows through the wires in the flashlight is electrical energy, and in the end, we can see light energy. So let's think about this fan. 
how many types of energy conversions take place with the fan? The same as the flashlight, except the end energy is wind energy instead of light energy. Very nice. So let's go back to our question of the day. I want you to turn and talk with your partners and discuss um, the question of the day. How many energy transformations can take place to complete a task? Think about specific examples that we've seen throughout the day. All right, so does anyone have an answer? How many energy transformations can take place to complete a task? It depends. The fan and the flashlight had four. Our machines had seven or so. Very nice. So how do you know the energy was transformed from one object to the next? What evidence do you see? You see changes. Good. So the amount of energy conversions depends on what we're looking at. The important point is that energy doesn't disappear. It's constantly being converted from one form to another. All right, so now I'm going to pass out a ruler and a bouncy ball to each table. And what we're going to do is you're going to release the ball from the top of the ruler on the table. So you're going to have the ruler like this on the table. And you're going to release the ball from the top of the ruler. And you're going to make note of where the ball jumps back up to. So just like this, okay? All right, so everybody take uh, a couple minutes and do that at your tables. All right, so what happened? The ball didn't bounce all the way back up to where it started. Why not? Some of the energy was uh, used as kinetic energy. Correct. Some energy was transformed into kinetic energy, so the ball did not bounce as high as it was initially dropped. What type of energy conversion do you see here? Potential and kinetic energy. And why do you think that the ball didn't come all the way back up? Because some of the energy was transferred when it hit the table. Right. So remember how the energy transformed from one object to another in our Rube Goldberg experiment? Well, some of the energy of the ball was transformed into the table. This demonstration relates to an example that we might all be familiar with. Has anyone ever um, been on a swing, maybe on a playground? Yeah. Okay, so whenever you're swinging, you initially, imagine that you initially push yourself off to get yourself going, but don't kick, and just let yourself keep swinging back and forth, and so eventually you'll start slowing down slower and slower until you're not swinging anymore. So how do we account for this? We transform some of the energy into kinetic energy with our swing motion, swinging motion. Yeah, and so what force was against you slowing you down? Friction. Exactly. All right, so now it's time for you guys to show us what you know. And what we're going to be doing is passing you out the show what you know worksheet. And you're going to take a few minutes to fill that out. And then